Hi guys and welcome back to my channel for Vlogmas Day 10. My name is Rani and today I'm going to share with you all the books that I would like to find under my Christmas tree and that I won't find. Apart from a few, maybe. So at first my idea for this video was to go on my to-be-read shelf on Goodreads and just scroll through and choose a few books that I would like to find under my Christmas tree, that I would like to own, that I would like to receive or be gifted. And then a couple of days ago my brother texted me asking me what I wanted for Christmas and of course I wanted books and I didn't know which ones and I had like literally 10 minutes on the clock to make a list from which he could choose a few titles so that it would still be a surprise for me. So today I'm literally gonna share my Christmas wish list that I made for my brother knowing that one or maybe two books from this list I will actually find under my Christmas tree. Maybe not on Christmas Day, it depends on the international Amazon shipping policies, but at some point before the end of the year I will receive a book gift from my brother and it's going to be one of the titles that you're going to see in this video, which makes me so excited. A book that I already mentioned in a previous Vlogmas video, so I'm just going to mention it very quickly, is The Henna Wars by Adiba Jidar, and this is a YA LGBT contemporary book book that I was hoping to read this year because it came out in 2020. I didn't. It's so gorgeous. I have good feelings about it, so hopefully it might be under my Christmas tree. Who knows? We'll see. Another book, another YA kind of... Is it really YA? Maybe it starts so YA, but I think it gets darker and more adult, I guess, along the way, along the series. But I have the first book right here, and that book is... An Ember in the Ashes by Sabata here. I think I want to start 2021 rereading this book and then moving forward with the series. Therefore, I asked my brother, well, in the wish list that I sent my brother, there was the second book in the series, which is A Torch Against the Night by Sabata here. I don't know much about it. It's a sequel. Of course, I didn't read the synopsis because I was going to get spoiled and I don't want to spoil it for you, but just know that it's a Roman slash Greek inspired fantasy book and the first one was so good and it's dark, it's twisted, it's political, it's military, it's fantasy. It was so good and I really need to move forward with this series already. The last YA book on this list is Changing Ways by Julie Tannenbaum. I haven't heard much about this book. It has a high rating on Goodreads but it isn't very well known, it's not famous, and it's a YA contemporary that deals with self-harming and eating disorders, and when I read the synopsis it seemed very interesting, and it's part of a series of companion novels, if I'm not mistaken, so each book explores different topics, different issues, and one of them I think might also have some LGBT themes, which, you know, always interests me. Maybe it was this one, or maybe the second one. I'm not sure. I don't know, but it's there and I want to get to it. A fantasy? I think it's a fantasy. It has time travel. It has like different worlds, different world buildings, so I'm guessing it's a fantasy. And it is This Is How You Win the Time War. Is that how it's called? By Amal El Motar. I totally butchered that name. And Max Gladstone. I'm not sure about the exact English title because it's come out in Italy this year and I want to read it in Italian so in my wish list I put it in Italian so I'm not quite sure about the English title this is what I remember but it might be wrong you will see it from the cover on the screen but this should be a sweeping epic excruciatingly sweet love story between two assassins or something like that. They can travel across time and they are rivals but in each different time slash world slash dimension. I'm not quite sure about how this world works as you can see but they leave clues and letters to each other and as time goes by the letters become deeper and sweeter and more romantic and they become these beautiful wonderful love letters Everyone who's read this book has loved it. I cannot wait to read it. I want to love it. It has love letters, which is something that I absolutely adore. It's LGBT. It's fantasy. Do I need to say more? <laughs> then I chose an adult romance because I've been wanting to read this book since when I saw it in a bookstore in New York when I went to visit my brother last year. 
and when we could still travel without any problems because there wasn't a world pandemic going on. Remember those times? It seems like another century. I saw this book in the bookstore and the cover was just so pretty and so nice to the touch. It was kind of... it had a texture. I don't know how to explain it. Anyway, it is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary? Yes, Beth O'Leary. This is about a woman who I think breaks up with the boyfriend and she needs to find a new house pretty quickly and so she sees an ad and basically she ends up sharing this one bed apartment with a guy because I think he works during the night and she works during the day so basically they share the living space but they don't really ever meet and they start leaving post-its and notes to each other and they communicate like that. It's a very tough premise to sell, I think, but if the author can pull it off, I think it can be a very nice and different romance and I'm intrigued. I've been wanting to read it for more than a year, so who knows if my brother chose it. It's romance, I don't think he did. Then I chose two memoirs. One is Eat Gay Love by Callum McSwiggin and I don't know much about it. I know it's about this guy who I think is from the UK but he has traveled all over the world and his travels are in this memoir. As you can gather from the title, it's an LGBT memoir which it's my favorite jam and I don't need to know anything else in order for me to want it. And the other memoir is The Magical Language of Others by E.J. Kahn. I'm not 100% sure what this memoir is about. I think that the author found letters from her grandmother that she wrote to her in Korean, if I'm not mistaken, and she translated those letters. I don't know who those letters were addressed to or what they're going to be about, but I've heard amazing things about this memoir. But if you know me, you know that I love letters and that I love reading letters and if you have a combination of a memoir, different culture and letters, I think I'm going to love whatever comes out of it. Last but not least, of course, I needed to have some graphic novels on my wish list, otherwise it wouldn't be a friendly Christmas wish list. Blue is the warmest color by Julie Marot. This is a very famous French graphic novel that is about a girl who falls in love with another girl at her school. It's supposed to be an explicit graphic novel but at the same time it's very sweet, very tender. They made a movie from this that is very much controversial. Julie Marot has a wonderful, delicate, beautiful, and honestly every time I go into a bookstore I pick this graphic novel up and I just flip through it because I love, I love seeing her drawings, but it's so expensive, so will I ever buy it on my own? I don't think so. Maybe my brother got it for me. I guess we'll have to see. Another graphic novel is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness but a very specific edition because I already have my copy of A Monster Calls. This is illustrated by Jim Kay and he's just incredible when it comes to illustrations. He's so talented. His illustrations just speak to you and make you feel things. He's just incredible like that. But um, this particular edition of A Monster Calls is the movie tie-in. It's not the movie tie-in. Basically you have the story, the actual text by Patrick Ness and Jim Kay's illustrations, but you also have fun facts and behind the scenes images and stories, I guess, because they made a movie from this book and it was such a great movie. I watched it, I cried so much. It was beautiful and I want to know more about how they made the movie, how it was making it and just seeing everything about it. I want to know and I want to own this specific edition of the book. And last but certainly not least, I have the box set of Life is Strange by Emma Vicelli, Vicelli, I don't know how to pronounce her name. I don't know much about this graphic novel. Do you notice the trend here? Um, I know that it's a sapphic love story and it might be post-apocalyptic. I'm not quite sure, but it should be. It's based on a game that I've never played, but I found it online just randomly. I came across it and I found a few pages of the graphic novel and I looked at the art style and the drawings and they were just 
perfection like the whole style not just the drawings but also how the text is incorporated it just looks beautiful and I know that I'm going to love them because I just do and so I, I think I'm just going to get the box set because it's cheaper and just fly through the three volumes. I think there are three. This was it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Please let me know if you have read any of the books that I mentioned that are on my Christmas wish list and please let me know in the comments down below if you have compiled a Christmas wish list, a book wish list and what books were on your wish list. I will see you tomorrow with another bookmas video that is going to be a Christmas book tag and until then, warm hugs. Bye!